Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. It's 1988, and a mysterious hooded man is walking through Philadelphia. Meanwhile, a pianist, a cook, and a bus driver are going about their usual nights, when they all start bleeding from all of their orifices at the same time. A bus collides, and a book falls to the ground, revealing that the driver has been reading American Patriot. Thomas, a police officer, is about to start his shift, however, before leaving the house, he prepares a quick breakfast for his pregnant wife Jean. They go to see the bus crash, where Thomas' brother-in-law and head detective Holt is already working, with his partner Maddox. When they examine the body, they find pieces of the driver's brain on the floor, as well as three strange puncture wounds on her neck. Later, they examine the pianist, discovering the same situation, mind chunks and three puncture wounds. Thomas and Maddox visit the postmortem doctor, who explains that the injuries were caused by injection sites that were deep enough to affect the vertebrae. However, no one in the lab is able to identify the toxic substance used in this injection. They leave to get a bite to eat, and Thomas takes advantage of the opportunity to purchase a bracelet for Jean. Their meal is cut short by a call from a cop who has discovered another person with those three puncture wounds, but this one is still alive. The two rush to the club, where Holt is also waiting for questioning, and they discover that this girl was attacked by a black woman wearing a blue hoodie. However, before she can provide more information, she dies in the same manner as the others. The police begin questioning every black woman they can find, and thanks to a few witnesses, they have an identity. Soon after, they track down the murderer's last known location, and Thomas and Maddox happen to run into her by chance. Her name is Rhea, and she runs to the subway station to hide, so the cops follow her there, missing when the radio inside the car announces Jean is in labor. Thomas discovers an empty futuristic weapon on the floor, that appears to be the injection device used by Rhea, but it is Maddox who discovers her first. Rhea easily fights him off and breaks his leg, fleeing, but the noise they make is enough for Thomas to track them down. He points his gun at her, only to freeze as she begins speaking incomprehensible words. Rhea recognizes his name, and says, that is where it takes place. She also congratulates him on his new daughter, and apologizes for Maddox, saying she didn't mean to. Thomas refuses to listen and attempts to arrest her, but Rhea fights him off and handcuffs him to a bench. When Thomas remembers he still has her weapon, he hits her with it, and Rhea falls back, dying as the train passes by. He leaves the station with the case closed, and another officer tells him about his wife. He rushes to the clinic, where he is approached by another cop, who informs him that Rhea had no ID or fingerprint matches and that she was a nobody. The only thing she had on her were a few strange keys. The officer also requests Thomas' revolver, because Rhea had a bullet from a service gun in her hand, which is unusual given that none of the police officers on the scene of the crime fired their weapons. A nurse then informs Thomas that Jean is having difficulty giving birth and is hemorrhaging. Thomas rushes to her side and places the bracelet on her wrist, but his presence is insufficient. Moments later, the doctors inform them that the baby is fine, but Jean has died. Nine years later, in 1997, Thomas is now a detective, and takes a break to celebrate his daughter Amy's birthday. Amy has worn her mother's bracelet since she was a child, and Thomas gives her a new charm for it every year. Their first stop is at the cemetery, to leave a few flowers on Jean's grave, and Thomas is surprised to see that someone else has already gone there and left flowers. They must be on their way to the zoo next, but Thomas receives an emergency call, and because it is so important, he leaves Amy with another cop for a moment, while investigating the new crime. Maddox has arrived as well, walking with a limp and swearing he wasn't the one who left flowers for Jean earlier. The reason Thomas was summoned is that another body with three wound punctures has appeared, and given that today is the anniversary, it cannot be a coincidence. This time, the victim is a political science professor, and the strange poison has been used again, which is unusual, because no one, not even the police labs, could figure out what it was. Holt, now a lieutenant, arrives as well, and after telling Thomas that he too did not leave flowers for Jean, they check the security cameras, and discover someone wearing the same hoodie as Rhea. The cops decide to blame it on a copycat, but Thomas isn't convinced, and drags Amy back to the station to reopen the old case. They never thoroughly examine the clues, because with Rhea dead, the case was closed, but now it is time to put the puzzle pieces together. Thomas sends the keys they found to be analyzed, at the same time, he learns that more bodies with the same wounds have been discovered, and he decides to stay on the station and work on the case, so Amy's birthday trip is cancelled. They can't find any link between all of the victims, but Thomas becomes concerned when he notices the copycat has an injured hand like Rhea, but they never make that information public. The test results show that the keys belong to a plane, 
common in small airfields, that was manufactured in 1996, which contradicts the fact that they got these keys in 1988. Only one airfield in the area has that type of aircraft, so Thomas sends Amy and an officer to investigate. On his way out, he runs into Dr. Rao, who points out that the case has a few coincidences, that go along with his research. The murders coincide with a specific lunar perigee known as a blood moon, which is theorized to open a portal into time travel, but Thomas and Maddox dismiss him. When they arrive at the airfield, it is closed, but Thomas notices a light inside, and decides to sneak in anyway. The clerk denies seeing anyone this night, but Thomas can tell he's acting awkwardly and nervously, so he tries to communicate with him through notes, because he suspects he's being held hostage. His prediction is correct, but before he can act, Rhea appears next to him, alive and not having aged a day. She makes Thomas drop the weapon, while pointing her gun at him, then orders the clerk to tie him up. With the clerk between him and Rhea as cover, Thomas uses the opportunity to pull out his smartphone and call Maddox, so he can hear what's going on, before he's tied to a chair. Rhea then requests plain keys, and while the clerk is about to take them, he pulls out his own weapon to defend himself, but Rhea is quick to react and knocks him out to take the weapon for herself. She is startled when Maddox appears in the back, and she accidentally shoots him, killing him without intending to, which explains the apology she gave Thomas nine years ago. As a backup party led by Holt approaches the airfield, Rhea drags Thomas away in a plane. Thomas falls asleep and dreams of Jean, before Rhea wakes him up and tells him to stop chasing her, because she's doing everything she can to save people's lives. She is alive, because every nine years, when the moon sets, she can return, but only for a short time. She doesn't need to explain anything else, because Thomas wishes to land and return home to his daughter, but he refuses, so Rhea pushes him out of the plane and into the water. He swims to the shore and discovers the crashed plane, but there is no sign of Rhea. After Holt chastises him for being reckless, Thomas informs him that they may not find Rhea's body, because she is most likely a time traveler from the future. In 2006, Thomas is digging out the grave of Harold Novak, whose death had been dismissed as the result of an addiction, but Thomas now reveals the three wound punctures on his skeleton. He has become so invested in this case, that he has left the force to work as a private investigator, to solve the mystery surrounding Rhea. He lives in his car and listens to the police force's frequency for any clues. He has also begun researching the moon and its energies, while searching for the missing medical Dr. Rao. After checking Novak's name on a list, Thomas pays a visit to the widow, who informs him that Novak once led a white nationalist militia group. Novak's ex-wife Heather used to work for him, so Thomas writes her name down, and asks for a list of the organization's members. This list is the missing link, because it contains the names of many of Rhea's victims. Thomas visits Amy's school every now and then. She now lives with Holt and his wife, and she rarely sees her father. In fact, she disapproves of his way of life. Nonetheless, she attempts to inform her of any news in her life, including the mention of a boyfriend who Thomas doesn't recall having met before. Then Thomas drops Amy off at her house, but not before giving her a birthday gift, which is yet another charm. Amy had stopped wearing the bracelet for quite some time, and Thomas had taken no notice. Next, Thomas visits Jean's grave, and meets Holt at a restaurant, to show him the brand new clues he has discovered. Thomas believes Rhea is killing all members of this organization with a sophisticated poison from the future, that can be activated remotely, and she's shifting backward in time as the rest of the world moves forward, which explains why Thomas saw her die and then reappear perfectly fine, and why she had those records about him. Thomas simply wants Holt to assist him in obtaining Heather's address, however, Holt believes Thomas is insane and dismisses the time travel theory. Now unwilling to surrender, Thomas pretends to cry, and accepts he has a mental health problem, apologizing for his actions. Holt hugs him and promises to help him find a therapist, and Thomas takes advantage of the opportunity to steal his badge. As soon as Holt leaves, Thomas impersonates him and calls the station to request Heather's information from the system. Unfortunately, by the time Thomas arrives at Heather's house, she's already dead, having received identical bleeding and three wound punctures. Rhea bolts from the house, and Thomas attempts to shoot her, wounding her hand with one of his bullets, which was previously discovered on her dead body. Rhea flees on a motorcycle, so Thomas steals a truck and pursues her to the same beach where she crashed the plane. Thomas reveals the location of Rhea's time machine by entering a sewer pipe, but before he can do anything, she activates it and flees. While Thomas exits the sewer, Holt and his men are anticipating his arrest, not believing his bizarre story about a time traveler. Rao observes the entire scene from a distance. Rao finally finished working on the poison that Rhea might use nine years later, in 2015, by testing it on pigs. Thomas was correct, it is activated remotely from a computer, 
and is the cause of all of the victims dying at the same time. His lab is near the same shore as the sewer pipe, and security cameras show him that Thomas is setting up camp at the beach today, because he knows it's the anniversary and Rhea should be there. While waiting, Thomas receives a call from Amy, who informs him that, despite the fact that they haven't seen each other in a while, she would like him to be present when she has her toddler. He barely has time to think about what to do, when his face is covered and he is knocked out. When Thomas awakens, he finds himself in Rayo's van with all of the dead pigs. Rao explains that it is because of Thomas' investigation that he realized Rhea is saving the world, and that she is the culmination of his own research. He will keep Thomas locked up for a few days, so Rhea can do her thing, and then Rao promises to let him go. However, Thomas does not accept this plan, and jumps on Rao in an attempt to force him to stop the van. The car eventually crashes, allowing Thomas to flee. Rhea appears on the beach a few moments later, after time traveling for the first time, and Thomas is waiting for her. He intends to kill her so she can't return, so the murders don't happen, and he doesn't emerge as this obsessed shell of a person. Rhea explains that he will not do so, because she has known him her entire life, Thomas was the one who convinced her to take this job. Then Rhea removes her bracelet, revealing that she is Thomas' granddaughter, defined by the fact that Amy married a black man. Thomas puts down his gun, and asks Rhea to stop him from killing her in the past, but she can't, because it's already happened and time travel is a one-way trip. Rhea asks Thomas to accompany her home, and spend time with Amy while she finishes her business. It all started in 2024, when Rhea was 9 years old, when someone detonated a van full of explosives, killing 11,000 people. This set off a chain of events that culminated in a civil war, that killed hundreds of thousands and left the country in ruins. That is why Rhea volunteered to go back in time, and shoot all of the militia members with the doctor's special poison, which is activated in the future by an old Rao, resetting the entire timeline. Back in the present 2015, Thomas arrives at the hospital just in time, and Holt is relieved to see that he has finally prioritized family over work. Thomas is given the opportunity to hold Rhea for the first time, and he wraps the bracelet around her tiny wrist. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.